Today I'm going to be looking at pastels and finding out whether they are toxic or they're safe to use. My name is Jason Morgan, welcome into my studio. Okay, first thing I want to bring up is I'm not a scientist, I'm not a health and safety executive, I'm not qualified in any of this. I'm a professional wildlife artist, I spend quite a lot of time working with pastels and oil paints. I'm concerned about my health as others are. We don't want to be using these materials and then finding out years and years down the line that they've actually been bad for our health. So that's what I've done. I've looked a bit deeper into the subject. I've looked at pastels in particular at the moment. I'll probably do oils on a new video further on down the line. But I wanted to look at the aspects of dust and also the pastel um, pigments and heavy metals that can sometimes be contained in there as well. And with uh, pastels in particular, there's two main problems or things we need to look at. The dust, because they can create minute particle dust that can go into our lungs if we breathe or blow it. And also the toxicity of the colours, um, the components that give you the colours, the heavy metals in there as well. So I've got a few notes as well down here because I want to get things um, right. There's a lot of um, things to discuss because have you heard of that term? Opening a can of worms, you think it's going to be an easy answer and it's not. But what I want to do is give you some information so you can decide for yourself. I urge you to look further into this and um, research it yourself as well so you're really educated on it. And that'll put your mind at rest because we've got to put things in perspective. Lots of times, um, you know, we're a real society in our world that loves drama and everything seems to be blown out of proportion. And it's worth keeping in mind, you know, as I point out in this video, things that also contain um, substances that are in some pastas are also in everyday products as well. So we need to keep that in mind. Now, there's a company or an organization, ACMI, and they are the Art and Creative Materials Institute. Now they do lots of great work, um, basically showing us what materials are safe and you get accreditation with them and you can get an AP so it's approved and you'll find that sometimes on your art product boxes or on the materials themselves. And basically they've tested them, they're working with, I think it's Duke Uni University in America um, and they've been doing this type of thing now for I think it's about 70 years um, and it shows what materials are safe for children as well what's approved so it'll have a little AP rating on there and if I show you on some of my products I've got a, a Rembrandt selection here of soft pastels let me hold that up to the camera and then on the back I've got I don't know if I can zoom in or get that you can see there a little AP circle so that's approved and that means that when used correctly that the products that are in this pastel set don't have any problems associated with them as such. Now that means I think, I'm pretty sure it's got none of the dangerous heavy metals in there, but it doesn't really relate to the fact that all pastels will create a, or can create a fine dust. Okay, and from what I've seen, I can't see any real scientific evidence or anything that's been tested long term that shows that um, fine dust created with particles cause problems or don't cause problems. I think there's one possibly you have to look it up yourself for a Duke University test that looked at about seven over about 17 years and couldn't find any association with using pastels with any health issues so that's great so there's nothing usually in this day and age if there's a problem or a slight problem with anything it'll be zoomed in on and there will be tests one after another done on it and it'll start to get really frightening looking but i can't find anything and that's usually a, a really good sign but not all products have got this um, ap rating now you can also have if it's tested by acmi which is an international, so it's not just a USA based type of thing, so it can be all products. And I think it's got around about 200 art and craft material manufacturers that are being tested and looked at. If it hasn't got the AP approved product, 
stamp on there it could have a cautionary label so a CL on there now that means that they are products um, that are not hazardous if used correctly okay so I'm assuming that they may have some um, heavy metals in them perhaps but look into that yourself but you've got those the AP means the approved products and that's okay for children to use as well okay so what you'll find though on some of your um, soft pastels here's a box of unison okay so that's a very well respected brand it's been around for many many years and it's considered by lots as the best of all the pastels of the soft pastels but as far as labeling there's nothing on this box anyway perhaps they are on other boxes but what I'm saying is I've got Prismacolor here new pastels and there's nothing on there either I've got Faber Castell soft pastels this is creative so the student ones and actually here if I can get that to zoom in we've got the approved label on there so summer's got it on there now this um, Prisma color new pastel box has got it on there okay so it can be a bit of a minefield my Carbothello pencil box I couldn't see anything on there at all so that can be a bit of a problem the um, ACMI has a website and I'll put the link there for you because you can actually key in there on their website and they've got a list of products that has been tested and what's got approval and the ratings on there as well so if you want peace of mind and you can't find labels on your boxes you can look on there also don't forget contact the manufacturers ask them directly is it safe to use are you using any toxic heavy metals so that's things like um, cadmiums and cobalts in there now just because a color may be called cadmium yellow probably it doesn't actually have any cadmium in there so they keep the names even though they've taken the hazardous materials out and lots of manufacturers have taken these hazardous materials out years ago so it's not in everything at all now I saw a bit of a spike of the amount of people has asking me about um, toxic products the pastels fairly recently and I think that's because there's been kind of a new um, requirement in California that dry products that contain titanium dioxide have got to have a new label on them I think so that made people worry about it being a possible carcinogen now the product they're talking about is titanium dioxide now you've got to put these things in perspective again so you may be worried about your pastels all of a sudden you've got a label on there that says uh, toxic or possible carcinogen or something like that you're obviously scared to use it but you've got to remember titanium dioxide is a whitener and it's used in lots and lots of products now it could be in your sunscreen it could be in your makeup um, it could be in your chewing gum it could be in icing on your cakes it could be in toothpaste could be in lots of things it's really really widely used so you've got to put it into perspective and think okay I'm gonna stop using my pastas because that could be a possible carcinogen but are you gonna stop actually chewing your gum are you gonna stop eating icing on your cake you're gonna stop putting possible sunscreens on you're gonna check the labels on every single thing perhaps you are that's totally up to you but I'm just saying you know put things into perspective but that was one of the triggers I think that started people worrying about pastels recently because they could see this on there because you've got to remember a manufacturer if they are going to um, going to use a pro or make a product that could potentially be sold in California they're going to have to put that on their label as far as I know so you know that that's just something you've got to keep in mind so look at the um, ACMI website have a look on there check to see if it's got the approved the AP rating and if not and you can't find anything on your boxes or you're worried about it contact the manufacturer directly have a look at the data sheets on their website and they should tell you 
whether they've got heavy metals in there or not. It's not something they can go and hide. It should be up front. So other than the um, issue then with the heavy metals and the toxic substances, we've then got that dust to deal with. So even though you've got that approved pastel product perhaps, it's still going to create dust. What are we going to do about that? And I think if we, you know, you don't want a knee-jerk reaction and stop using pastels or then you're going to look at your oil paints and your acrylic paints and everything, your charcoal, you know, you've got to just keep it in perspective and I think if we follow some uh, simple rules we minimize all of the hazards. Now looking again on that um, the website that looks at the approved and the cautionary products they give us some you know guides general guides and obvious things to follow and they look at it with their cautionary products because they are approved you know should be okay to use anyway but I'm concerned a little bit about the dust if you're doing this long term okay so let's look at what they say so with the cautionary ones keep it out of reach of children and keep your work area clean which is important you know if you're letting dust and contaminants build up all the time and then you're going in there remember some of these things or lots of them you can't even see in the air so vacuum or wet mop dust don't sweep it and I've got a little bit more about that um, detail on that later on keep your work area well ventilated and I've got the, the thing with that, if you're opening windows, you could actually be, so you're increasing ventilation. The problem is you may have wind blowing in onto the pastel dust blowing up into your face. So I think that's more applicable to things like oil painting. Avoid eating, drinking, or anything like that where you could transfer from your hand to your mouth. So it sounds obvious, but perhaps we've got a glass of water by the side. Perhaps our hand is touching the rim with dust on it. We don't notice and we are actually ingesting quite a bit. So you don't want to be eating in your studio or your workplace. Um, you can use gloves. You can use masks. You've got to think, do you want to go that route? Do you really need to go that route with pastels? Personally, I'm not going to be wearing a mask. I don't like the vinyl gloves or that type of thing on there either. It, I like the feel of the pastels and as I said there's no um, research that I could find as of yet that proves that even doing pastel painting or drawing is harmful in any way anyway so that's something I don't want to do I don't want to be wearing masks and gloves um, protect any cuts uh, what else have they got on there because they talk about you know all different things they with sprays as well but I think the, the main things to keep in mind is to try and keep the dust down on your workspace now because I'm videoing lots of my pastels for you guys I'm working flat if I wasn't videoing it I would definitely be working upright now that gives the benefit of the pastel dust is then falling down off the pastel paper the excess dust now what I would do then is put a damp rag or damp tissues down at the bottom of that area underneath the drawing so that when that pastel dust is falling down it's going on there and it's kept in that area it's not then blowing around um, so that's what I would definitely do there but because I'm working flat I haven't got that option and you'll see on my videos that dust then builds up now I use pastel matte paper so dust is re very reduced anyway because it's clinging into that paper it's grabbing it and I use a lot of pan pastels. That doesn't create as much dust either. So those two things are good anyway. But you will see, obviously, some dust building up on my paper. Now, if you've got to work flat as I do, this is what I do. Now, I've got one of these um, handheld hoovers, vacuum cleaner. And this is a high power one. And it's got to have the HEPA filter in there. So where it says on that statement to actually keep your area clean and hoover it rather than sweep it that's all well and good but if you haven't got a very fine HEPA filter in there and that's what that means it's going to take the particles out down to something like 0.3 of a micron and bear in mind a hair on your head is something like if I remember rightly about 70 micron 
0.3 is very very minute so that's what you want because if you haven't got that filter in there you're going to be sucking up the pastel powder and it's going to blow out the back and it's just going to circulate around in front of your face even worse now what I do I actually get the end of this and I just get it very very close to my paper surface almost touching it but not quite and because this is quite powerful it sucks that pastel directly up and it's gone it's gone from my work surface so that helps me out a lot the other thing you want to look at is not to blow the pastel so if you haven't got one of these hoovers these vacuum cleaners you can have that tendency to blow the dust away and I'm guilty of that for sure it's very hard habit to break as well we used to doing that fine blowing away I don't know how dangerous that is but vacuuming the major amount off is going to definitely help for sure now continuing with the the dust issue because I do quite a lot of drawing and I've got a studio and all my art materials are in here and I've also I also work in oil so I've got the solvents to deal with I've got large windows in here so I can open them when I'm painting I've got good ventilation as I said with pastels I don't know how great an idea that is because it's actually blowing around but I researched filter systems for the studio and that's another minefield out there you get lots and lots of these uh, well-known brands that promise the earth and actually are causing more problems than not because lots of them are nothing really more than a very very expensive fan with a very very cheap filtration system in there so basically it's blowing the dust and the fumes around the studio and it's not actually helping in any way to remove all of the toxins that we want to remove so basically don't be fooled by these um, named brands that really push on uh, internet so you, they'll be I don't need to name them you know they're gonna be and they do everything usually from TVs all the way down to um, video recorders and a filter system is just something that they sell as well look for somebody who's been around for many years making these things for um, you know health reasons as well for people with asthma respiratory problems that's what you want to look for because if it's not going to do the job don't waste your money on it and if, if you're going to get one get a, get a good one that's going to last many many years now I looked online I looked through lots of different companies I found a company in the UK called breathingspace.co.uk and they was more than willing to uh, help me out with the the exact type of filter I would need not too large not too small right correct for the studio because the air has got to be filtered into these things five or more times I believe every hour at least for it to even be effective now lots of these other brands don't do that so it's completely waste of money and it's going to take up your studio space and there's no point at all because you're going to feel um, safer with it and it's probably going to make things worse because it's going to be just blowing those particles around instead and for virtually the same price maybe even a bit cheaper you can get one of these uh, filters that are specifically made for the purposes you know that we require to stop these particles going into our lungs and then you can rest assured that you, you're getting a good one so I've got a few notes about that as well um, but basically I'll show you the one I've got it's called a blue a203 now it, it is pretty large let me grab it and pull it in and I'll show you there you go the back end of it okay so that's the the filter system in there itself it's a very large space I'll just sit back down and it's got a really large area of charcoal in there as well now that's going to help me this one the blue air 203 and it's for uh, smoke as well I believe so it takes out the the um, bad things from the oil painting as well the volatiles from the oil painting mediums and solvents so that's why I got this one you can get it without that as well but for just extra couple of pound I'm covered now for my oil painting and for my pastels you got three levels on you the first level is virtually silent and that's it actually on 
okay so it's sucking in on this section on the top we've got a grill area and it's blowing out the air there i think it's charging the air as well so that next circulation is pulling those charged particles in but don't quote me on that these are just things i remember from reading the actual manual on it so you've got other levels you can go up to really fast levels on there as well obviously you're getting noisier then but you can see that it really then sucks in the paper and it really blows out on the top so you know you've got lots and lots of power in there both ways so it's actually going to do the job and it'll even go if you really want to blast that studio it'll go even louder or higher than that and you can see it's really really well powered so you can go from that silent mode all the way up on on that uh, particular product and then when you look at the model from the front so it's much prettier from the front but the back end is is actually the working end on it and it's quite heavy too it's um, heavy duty metal on that so it's you know it's going to last me many many years you can change your filters really easily on them um, it's just pop it out the back get a new filter filter and pop that back in to replace the other one really very very simple and you've just got that little dial on there to um, select the level you want and then you've got it comes with a, a small unit that actually counts down the time the days for you to actually change the filter on there now I'm not um, bound by that company whatsoever. I had to buy my unit myself. I paid 100% for it. So I've got no invested interest in selling that to you whatsoever. But what I am saying is look for a good one. If you're going to get a good filter, get a good one. Don't do what lots of us usually do. We look at the name brand and we go and buy that and then we regret it and it's, it's useless. So this is one of those purchases where you need to you know, go to a reputable type of place now the, the thing with the one that i've got is from a swedish manufacturer it's been around for over 20 odd years it's five-year warranty on there it's really high volume as you could see and um you know it'll recirculate i'm reading off off one of the information leaflets the air in the room uh, about once every 12 minutes so it's you know for a 21 square meter room that's really really good it's got a steel casing that helps to soundproof it most of the ones you find on the high street are just going to be made out of cheap plastic. It's ozone free. Now, most air purifiers are not ozone free. And don't forget, the ozone itself can actually be um, a trigger for respiratory problems. So this one, this blue air unit, is actually proven to reduce ozone levels, not increase it. And it's got the highest quality HEPA filter. So remember I was, I was talking about those HEPA filters with a hand vacuum? Well, HEPA filter would normally go down to 0.3 microns, which is incredible. This one actually goes down to 0.1, so 0 0.1 micron. So that's vastly um, finer again. And as I said at the beginning, it's got a really large activated carbon filter. So it takes out those volatile chemicals and the odors as well as this pass through that. And what's even better, it's a family run business. So when I contacted them, I was getting emails back straight away. They couldn't um, do enough to help me with all my questions. I had lots of unusual questions because I was an artist asking these things rather than someone they more typically be used to, such as uh, someone with health problems. And they've been going around for about 23 years. So, so I was really, really happy with them. And don't forget, there's other companies out there selling in all different places around the world. But, you know, you, what you've got to do now is see where you want to go with it and how far you want to go with the health aspect of it. So just to do a quick recap, what am I doing? You can, you know, um, look at these things and, and take from it what you will. I look at the ACMI website, I have a look at my products that I've already purchased because I purchased these before I even knew that company existed and I look down there if I can't see the label on my boxes for that AP approved um, label on there then I look to see if my 
my boxes are actually on there or the, the suppliers I'm using and if they're not I'm going to contact them if I can't see a data sheet on their website and see if they've got any of these toxic um, heavy metals in the products so that's the stage with that and what I'll probably do is I'm not going to chuck anything out it's too expensive to do that but I'm probably not going to go buy in any of the ones that are not approved in the future on the soft pastels in particular so when I'm replacing things I'll be looking more carefully for that sign now I'll be using better practices around the studio I'm not going to be bringing food in here because you can have a quick sandwich or something in between drawing I'm going to wash my hands more frequently keep perhaps an apron on so that I'm not rubbing the dust onto tracksuit bottoms or something and then walking around the house spreading dust around there. I'm going to be a bit more cautious perhaps get a working apron which makes sense anyway and I'm going to use my HEPA filtered hoover to take that dust off the surface because I work flat remember rather than upright if you're working upright get that damp cloth underneath your working area so that the particles just go in there if you're going to hoover around the studio perhaps you've got a um, laminate floor or something and you can see the dust really easily there make sure you've got a HEPA filter in your hoover in your vacuum so that you are not just blowing that around the studio personally I'm not going to be wearing a mask I'm not going to be wearing gloves I enjoy pastels I like the feel of them as well on my fingers and blending in so I'm not going that far with it and I bought and invested in that studio filter because I've got my enclosed room I think it's, it was great value it was just over £200 and to be honest you can pay that on a set of pastels or a set of coloured pencils no problem at all so when you look at it in, in the perspective put in perspective then the price of that really isn't extortionate for someone that's really really high quality it's not your regular high street brand and I feel a bit more confident with that there in the studio I can let it run all day long it takes about the same amount of power as a light bulb or I can boost it up 15 minutes before I go in the studio and then turn it down onto a silent mode while I'm working and then give it a good run after to get those particles out of the studio and because I do the oils it's getting the volatile chemicals out as well and I think that's covering pretty much all my bases without having knee-jerk reactions if I was working perhaps in a, an, a corner of the uh, living room you know just don't try to create dust try to maintain it I wouldn't worry too much about it but that's my personal opinion you've got to decide for yourself and I think with these things in place you can then enjoy pastels or even oil paintings if, you, if you're going to get one of those room filters as well in there so I hope this has cleared things up hope it hasn't given you even more questions and more worries about it but they are like I say the ACMI website I think you can contact them through there if you've got any more questions if you are concerned in any particular way so I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you all again real soon if you're looking for more art resources I've really got you covered I've got a dedicated tutorial website that's jasonmorgan.co.uk lots of videos on there ebook tutorials you name it it's on that site I've got a patreon art channel so every month I put up brand new videos and that could be pastel videos oils charcoals the full-length videos and there's also photo references with the easy trace line art on there I've got quite a few hundred people supporting me and that's on patreon and also if you have to even more reference photos I got a dedicated website just packed and packed with reference photos I think there's about 900 on there at the moment so that's wildlifeart-online.com now please with my youtube channel new videos coming on here as well if you can possibly subscribe to the channel then you're never going to miss out on new videos